Welcome to Quorum's webcast, Adding HA to Your Environment Without Adding Hardware, Building HA Anywhere. And to tell us a bit more about that today is Jason Snook. Jason is a senior systems architect at Quorum. And as you can see, he's an avid outdoorsman and just an all around great guy. So Jason, thank you so much for taking the time to lead us through the presentation today. Over to you. Thanks a lot, Darren, and thanks a lot, everyone, for joining today. So, yeah, I, uh, I'm a, a guy from the Pacific Northwest, a systems engineer at heart. Uh, before jumping on to uh, with uh, Quorum, about, gosh, it's been about three and a half years now. It's been about 15 years on the enterprise side, everything, uh, wearing hats from every, everything from the IT director, the sysadmin. Got a lot of experience building infrastructure and working on the network side. Um, so I hope to bring a very non sales oriented um, webinar today. I want to talk about something that I, I like to call HA anywhere or high ability anywhere. But before we jump into that, I want to level set. So, so why is it important to create infrastructure, infrastructure uh, that is always available? What, what is the importance of uptime? Don't want to spend a lot of time on this because I think it's pretty, pretty obvious. I mean, we build our infrastructure. Uh, for uh, demands from everything from customer facing sites to productivity applications. And it's got to be designed to be resilient, to uh, get around any sort of a hardware failure, storage failure. I mean, HA is there to help uh, avoid outages. Um, it's there to provide a layer of hardware redundancy, load balancing for heavier load applications. It eliminates that single point of failure. HA is one of those things that we've all, we all, we always try and build into our infrastructure one way or another. I mean, it's designed to restore an individual VM or physical server if it goes offline. Likewise, if you have an entire SAN outage and knocks down your entire environment, HA should be that, that goal, that, that device or that technology that brings back the, the systems and maintains uptime uh, regardless of the outage. So, the standard HA design has been around for a while. Now, I snagged this, this, uh, this design from VMware um, back in previous days. I was a, was a, a VMware guy, T totally loved the technology, loved the idea where you can have central storage, multiple hosts. You've got VMs using, you can move them around using vMotion. Uh, Hyper-V has a very similar design where you've got HA clustering services. And then the old school brick and mortar ways of physical servers, you know, in the Windows world, they call it Windows Server Failover Clustering. Generally speaking, they all, they all accomplish the same design, the same thing with the same design. They've got shared storage. You've got multiple hosts to load balance out your uh, compute demands. Um, you know, in the, the virtualization world, you can hot swap VMs, which is, you know, it's, it's incredible. You can move them from one host to another or one site to another site if you've got something like SRM in place. Um, you can take volume snapshots because you've got shared storage. So you do have a, a, a level of, of redundancy in the standard HA design. But this de design has been around for a while, and I, I personally think that it's time to reinvent it. There's, uh, there's some challenges that traditional designs have that I want to I see us, us meaning IT professionals and the industry itself, start to reinvent and evolve high availability. We need to instead of having a HA device or HA solution and then bolting on a backup and recovery solution, I think it's time we have one that does everything. I think uh, I'm a big fan of having a separate stack. And what do I mean by that? I mean leveraging nothing from production to resurrect systems. Why is this important? Well, again, if you have a SAN outage, how likely is it that you have another SAN sitting, sitting right next to it? Um, if you have multiple host outages that, that uh, eliminate your ability to do a vMotion failover, um, how do you get around that, that scenario where you're leveraging uh, production equipment for your ability to recover? Um, I like the idea of separate stacks because I like, I like getting, I like the, the solution that is, that is protecting my production solution to not leverage, not use anything from production. Um, traditional HA designs, let's face it, they're, they're expensive. They are very hardware intensive. When you add a secondary site to your standard HA design, or you add a cloud component to standard HA, you're talking about a serious investment. 
uh, let's say you have your 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 main site and you've got shared storage. You've got you know let's say 10 hosts, a couple SAN, and 100 or so VMs. Um, if you wanted to replicate that at your own secondary site, you are buying exactly the same amount of hardware for that secondary site, and then you're buying licensing to replicate it and rebuild it and keep a copy of it over at the secondary site. That gets expensive. That gets very complicated. Um, and a lot of times it flat out can be difficult. And, and again, I, we're in this stage where it's time to reinvent HA and say, let's remove those gaps of not, of having separate, disparate solutions for HA and backup and recovery. Let's put it on a completely separate stack and separate cloud. Let's not make it so expensive and difficult to deploy and maintain uptime. That is the goal of what I call high availability anywhere. So if you want to build out an HA Anywhere solution. Let's talk about what, what this means. Well, in my world, HA Anywhere should put the choice of deployment in your hands. And here's what I mean by that. So I'm gonna paint out a very basic example. Let's say you have 100 servers and 10 of them are transactional servers like SQL Server. Um, those you're gonna want to build an HA solution local right next to the SQL Server. But you've got another 90 servers that are app and web servers that they just don't change a lot and they're there you don't want to have to uh, commit an enormous amount of hardware to provide ha locally so put ha for those servers that don't change frequently put those elsewhere to save money and to reduce the complexity of the design ha anywhere should allow you to make your own choice for where and when you protect your servers and where and when you provide server resiliency. It's got to evolve into a scenario where it reduces complexity and it's got a lower cost. Um, anytime you're in the, in the space of having to go to management and ask them for a, a, a better widget or a better technology, you're talking about spending in a fair amount of dollars. And HA is one of those things where it's, you know, you're, you're preparing yourself for an outage or disaster. It's almost like buying insurance. And no one loves spending a bunch of money on that. So it's time to make it easier to do, still maintain that objective of maintaining uptime regardless of the outage, but do it without spending the same amount that you spent on your production systems in the first place. This is where, again, we need to evolve to where we can prioritize some servers for local HA, and then other servers give you the, the, the choice to save money and put that elsewhere, put it in a place where you're not having to add a bunch of hardware to your, to your infrastructure. Um, HA Anywhere has got to be separate stack and separate cloud, and here's why. Um, if you have your own SAN and your own host architecture uh, with company A, it is best practice to build out a solution that will restore from any outage on a completely separate stack. That's why if you have, if you ever ex have experienced a VMDK corruption, you'll know what I'm talking about. If you didn't have to deal with the, the particular VMDK files or the, the virtual images of your platform, if instead you had a running or a, a warm copy of your entire environment sitting on a completely separate stack. What do I mean by stack? Well, it's basic. It's, it's hardware, it's a hypervisor, and it's the management engine that creates the HA Anywhere ecosystem. It's the ability to spin up a clone of your entire environment on a completely separate stack and a completely separate cloud. Now, why is separate cloud important? Well, we've all seen outages with AWS and with Azure, and they're typically caused by, you know, someone else, someone else's fault causes those outages. And I want to change that to say, if someone else causes a public cloud outage, your HA solution should be able to bring you back up on a completely separate stack and completely separate cloud. That is the way that I want to see us reinvent high availability. HA Anywhere has got to, you've got to break the mold of having a HA environment like, like vMotion or Hyper-V clustering and then a secondary backup and recovery component because backup and recovery component is in a lot of ways it's, it's um, re, redoing what you've already built in with HA. So I want to see us build in HA, high availability, 
with backup and recovery, with the ability to go back in time, because that is one of the larger gaps that I see with HA. Unless you have some, you know, very, very good and integrated array replication and snapshotting, and even then that's not true backup. You want to be able to roll things back if you have a problem, not just restore from an outage, but what if you have ransomware? Well, HA Anywhere should get around ransomware quickly because you should be able to power on a clone from a no, known good state. And that is the premise that I want to see us move towards, is combining local clustering or local high availability with that traditional backup and recovery and then business continuity uh, cloud component. Pull it all into one single solution. So how do we design HA Anywhere? Well, we're going we're gonna to look at some a few examples here in a second. But the way that I see us designing that is it doesn't matter if you're a company who has local resources, we'll call those on-prem or cloud or some second or some mix of a secondary site that you've been replicating to. HA Anywhere is going to bolt on into a single ecosystem where you're going to decide where you uh, protect your systems and where that um, resides and where you, how you deploy protection. HA Anywhere is going to protect any configuration out there. I don't ever want, I, I was always frustrated in previous uh, positions when I was forced into a decision based on a particular vendor's product path, right? If I had a system where um, I was forced to go with a particular technology to replicate from point A to point, point B, um, VMware, they've got Site Recovery Manager. Site Recovery Manager is pretty good at what it does, but man, it is costly and very difficult to set up. And so I was a little frustrated that if I'm a VMware shop, I've got to look at SRM for a way of providing off-site redundancy. Um, so I want HA Anywhere to protect any configuration using that separate stack. I want it to uh, uh, include the ability to roll back in time. And I want it under a single ecosystem. I don't want to have to go to my production infrastructure company and say, how do I maintain uptime? That's not what I want. I want a single ecosystem that if I'm on AWS or on-prem or if I've got an off-site DR, I want to be able to have a system that keeps all of that online regardless of where it is and regardless of how it was built. That's how I want to design the next generation of high availability. So let's look at an example. So let's say you're a company that has on-prem uh, solution. Let's say you're even co-locating with a with a partner and you've got your storage, your host, your VMs, these are all your critical and non-critical applications all rolled into one. Well, you have the choice with HA Anywhere to deploy a local solution for the highly transactional servers like SQL Server or the high change rate servers like the file server um, and any servers that you're cloud averse. Again, I wanna reintroduce the discussion of it's your choice, this is your environment. You're building it the way that you want to see it fit. HA Anywhere is going to allow you to say, I want local on-prem protection for these this subset of servers. And I want cloud for everything else. So you can have cloud and you can have local HA um, and you can decide where you put your servers. You can even have a secondary remote site. You can have any combination of these with HA Anywhere and it's all going to be rolled into a single ecosystem. It's going to look like it's remote, or I'm sorry, look like it's local, and yet we're going to pull everything into a single unified solution where if you have to recover something local, um, you can just click a button, and on the back end, it's decided where it's going to spin that up. Is it going to spin up in the cloud and the DR site or in the local HA? It's, you're going to be able to recover anywhere, and you will have complete control over how this is designed. You're not going to be, you're not going to be um, restricted to a particular design where you have local and then bolt-on DR or bolt-on cloud. It's going to be a combination of all of these together. It will be rolled into one unified dashboard. It's going to run on completely separate stack. Uh, it's a single vendor. Now, here's a very important part to make. Single vendor, in the in the the other way of putting it, single throat to choke. You have with HA Anywhere the ability to have one vendor that's responsible for uptime. If anything goes wrong, you have one phone number to call, not a hardware vendor, not a software vendor, not a replication vendor, and not a 
different cloud partner that, that allows you to figure this out. I personally think that gone are the days of having all of these different vendors. You've got the ability now to have HA Anywhere where you have one vendor responsible for maintaining uptime of your infrastructure. You've got instant uptime. Well, what does instant uptime mean? It means if you're if you have a SAN outage that affects 50 VMs, you can be back up in a couple minutes. If you have one VM that goes corrupt, you can be back up in a couple minutes. If you have an entire site that is turned off, again, HA Anywhere is going to leverage local on-prem high availability along with cloud high availability along with a remote DR site to build in the ability to instantly bring servers and infrastructure back online. And you can always go back in time, right? This is always, this is still a solution where you can do the, the granular restore that we have been around for years with a traditional backup and recovery uh, solution. So HA Anywhere is really bridging multiple technologies and it's bundling them into a solution where uh, regardless of what you, the customer, has, regardless of where you put your compute and your storage, you can now protect it with a single solution, a single ecosystem that's, that's designed for all of this. So this is where I want to introduce Quorum's version of HA Anywhere. Quorum's highly available anywhere solution. First off, it's built on what we call OnQ. Now, Quorum OnQ, it's fully encrypted. It's high performance, and it's an easy-to-use HA solution. By fully encrypted, I mean everything that Quorum does is encrypted in motion and at rest. This is absolutely critical to organizations who have compliance needs to maintain complete data security. So know that anytime you roll out on Q, it is going to be encrypted. Now, you have options. You can choose where you protect, you can choose OnQ Local. Now, OnQ Local is a local purpose-built appliance. It's designed to provide one-click instant recovery on-site. Our appliances are, are all tiered storage. They're all 10 gig networking. Uh, they're designed to quickly recover from any outage, and they're designed to roll you back in time if you need to. Again, I pull back that ransomware discussion. If you have an environment where you can track ransomware on Monday morning at 8 a.m., and by the, you don't realize it until 10 a.m., well, with us, you can go back in time and you can run your environment from our solution from a known good state. Now, we also have OnQ Remote. Again, OnQ Remote, Remote it is a purpose-built appliance that is installed at your secondary site, and that provides DR protection. You still get one-click instant recovery. So if you're backing up some of your servers locally, some of them you're sending directly over the wire to the DR site, or it's a mix. Let's say you're protecting SQL locally and then you're, you're replicating a copy of SQL to the, to the remote site. From our world, you get to choose where you recover from. And then you have OnQ Cloud. Now OnQ Cloud is the OnQ instance is hosted on our private cloud. Now, uh, you still have the ability to provide, we still provide one-click instant recovery, yet it runs from the cloud. So the beauty of this is you have no more hardware. If you decide to do all Quorum Cloud, what you'll have is a solution where OnQ is protecting all of your servers with no hardware on site, and yet Quorum Cloud is going to look like it's sitting on site. The way that we do this is technically we're going to build a layer two tunnel between you and us. And so you'll have a dashboard that's responsible for failover that is running remote and yet it looks local. So you can pick and choose what your deployment model will be on Q Cloud, on Q Remote, and or on Q Local. It's a combination of, of any thereof. So you decide how you want to deploy this, but know that you're going to deploy it and you're going to manage it from a single interface and it's going to everything will look like it is local. So that is Quorum's. HA Anywhere. Now, how do we do this? How do we technically achieve this? Well, if we start with your on-prem or your, cl your cloud investment or your cloud infrastructure, again, you have the choice. You can, if you want, build an L2 tunnel to us and it goes to our private cloud. Now, let's talk a little bit about private cloud and why we don't do public cloud. Well, we, we Quorum, we have decided to build out our own data centers and have our own private cloud because a lot of our customers are, are faced with compliance needs. So we like to have control over the data that we collect 
the hardware that we collect it on, and we'd like to have control over all of the encryption. So with OnQ Cloud, everything is 100% private. It's 100% encrypted in motion and at rest. You're only going to pay for what you use. You're never going to pay for ingress and egress networking charges, unlike public cloud. You'll have public IP addresses available for you. So if you wanted to fail over your entire site to Quorum's uh, OnQ Cloud, you can do this with an IP addresses that we'll give you to run um, web services. You'll have access to a VPN that will allow you to get your clients or get your secondary sites connected directly to OnQ Cloud. And again, this is going to bridge that connection. So from you, the customer, it's a fairly easy event. So if you have an out, a site-wide outage, you could literally turn on OnQ Cloud, point everyone to it, and continue operation while you fix your production site. Um, you can also deploy OnQ Local. So OnQ Local is good for any and all of your environment or just the servers that you that are, are more critical than others. So again, I, I, I fall back to that example that I um, talked about earlier, 100 servers. 10 of those are highly transactional, or very, very critical. Those 10, you can have a local HA appliance for. That local HA appliance is taking snaps, snapshots, um, it is building the system to where you can recover it locally. Um, you can even, and at that point, you can restore anything using a central dashboard. Again, this dashboard is going to look like it's local, even though you have a combination of a local purpose-built appliance and uh, servers that are replicating to Quorum's on Q Cloud. So the goal here is, again, you choose where you provide HA. And then we'll provide the solution to where it's going to look completely local. It will look exactly like everything is sitting on site. Um, it's a way to get into highly available environments without costly investment in additional um, hardware that matches production. Because again, you can, you can split the load between on queue cloud and on queue local. It's completely up to you. Let's look at a different scenario. Let's say you're a company that has, uh, again, uh, on-prem or cloud infrastructure. You, again, you have the choice, any or all of these, or just some of these. You can go to OnQ Local, you can go to OnQ Cloud, or you can go to OnQ Remote. They will all be managed by a central dashboard that looks like it's local. Um, a little bit about our technology. We are all application consistent um, snapshots. So every time we snapshot a server, uh, we create what's called a VM clone, or we call it a recovery node, that can be booted up and take the place of production. We encrypt everything in motion and at rest. We also deduplicate in motion or um, in line, and we compress all data to make efficient use of both the cloud, remote, and local. On that local appliance, you've got an RTO of five minutes or less. You've got granular recovery of files, folders, anything you want to do. Um, you've got retention of at least 45 days and you've got archiving um, up to years if you want. Now, I show this under the, the local HA appliance, but this is the, the, that same feature set is good for on queue cloud and on queue remote. Now, if you roll out the cloud, again, it's private, it's encrypted, you're only going to pay for what you use. This is how you drive down the cost of an HA deployment. You could, for example, uh, put in a smaller quorum purpose-built appliance local, and then everything else goes to the cloud where you're paying a fraction of the cost of what the hardware originally cost. Or you can do a combination of local, remote, and then some other to the cloud. It is completely up to you. We can even hold secondary copies of anything that you want. That would be called mirroring. So for example, if I've got, if you have your SQL server and you say, I want to not only have 45 days of retention, but I want three copies of it. I want a copy local, I want a copy at the remote, and I want a copy at the cloud. That is the just-in-case scenario. You can do that for all of your servers, or just a handful, or just a few of them. So it is truly up to you on how you deploy this solution. So the solution at its core is designed to recover from outages. So if you lose a server, you can bring up a clone on the OnQ local, cloud, or remote. If you lose the SAN and it takes everything down, you spin them all up on the OnQ local, the cloud, or the remote. If you lose a site, you're going to roll over to the OnQ cloud or the OnQ remote. Um, again, we're talking about instant failover. You literally will turn on the VMs and start running from our OnQ solution as opposed to your production hardware. Now, 
if you're in this conversation and you're saying, well, how do I choose which one, uh, which servers, where do, where, how do I choose which on queue? Where do I put the servers? Well, it's a pretty basic formula. You, you need to look at your server type. You need to look at the change rate, uh, the critical data set, and the desired RPO. Remember, RPO is recovery point objective. It means how far in the past do you want to roll back to? Now, you're going to make this decision based on this criteria. And once you come up with that, you're going to look at the bandwidth that you have available to yourself. Um, you're going to look at the, how much bandwidth is needed for the egress of the data, right? Egress of the data meaning pull the data from your on-prem and push it, let's say, for example, to Quorum's on queue cloud. Um, you're going to look at the recovery network access speed. This is highly important. So if you're going to go with on queue cloud for everything, what you want to do and what we'll do with you is we'll help you calculate what will your rec recovery network performance look like if you spun up a SQL server in our cloud. And we have ways of showing you how that's going to impact. It. Again, it's totally your choice. You can have some on site and some in the cloud. Um, it will all be bridged together. You're going to want to run a latency check to both to either your secondary site or to our cloud. Uh, we all know the internet's best known for best effort network, so you want to check latency, and we'll do what we can to make sure that we pick a pick a path that will get you the, the least amount of latency and the ability to use any connection that you want to bridge to us. Um, we'll help you work on a rep with a replication calculator. Now, this calculator is, is good for determining how often can I snap a server and send it over the cloud, and how long will that take? Finally, security. Security is going to play a big role into where you put your recovery or where you how you build out your HA. Do you need full encryption locally and remote? Do you need to own the, the, the keys locally and remote? Um, what about cloud averse servers and data? Um, servers that you just cannot put in the cloud. Well, with us, you don't have to put them in the cloud. You can build out your secondary site, hold a copy locally and also hold a copy at the secondary site. Um, layer two security with ACLs, this is pretty basic stuff. If you're building a bridge to us, you're gonna wanna make sure that the only thing the only thing that's communicating is what you allow. And with our solution, you can give complete granular control over what goes over the wire between your network and our network where the recovery uh, solution is sitting. Now, one final reminder here. HA, HA Anywhere, it's not just the cloud. It's not just on-prem. It's a combination of both managed completely seamlessly. So let's wrap it up. I think I told you guys in the beginning, beginning I'm not a huge fan of of lengthy uh, sales webinars, so let's let's uh, wrap this thing up in, in just shy of 30 minutes. So, um, Quorum's HA Anywhere solution is going to be able to combine cloud, local, and remote in a configuration that meets your HA needs. You don't have to pick and choose, and you don't have to go to multiple vendors to, to obtain a highly available environment. You can provide HA back and recovery with as much or as little hardware as you desire. The control is entirely in your hands. HA, backup and recovery, it's all completely with us on a completely separate stack. We are the hardware. We are the management engine for, for backup and recovery and failover. We are the hypervisor. Um, nothing is leveraged from your production environment it, should you have an outage. Everything is fully encrypted in motion and at rest. This is very, very important. Another key benefit here is that you can test your ability to fail over at any time for no additional cost. If you want to run your VMs from our cloud to test uh, failover capabilities, you can do that at any time without impacting your bottom line. Now, with that being said, I want to thank you guys for, for sticking with me. Let's uh, jump it over to Darren. Darren, do we have any questions today? Excellent, Jason. Thank you so much for the presentation. Great job. Um, we do have some things uh, that have come in, so uh, I'll just encourage the audience uh, to type your questions into the console. Um, we'll take a look and we'll answer as many as we can. We've had some come in already, so thank you to everyone who've already submitted questions. Uh, please, you know, feel free to just fire away, and uh, I'll toss them over to Jason as they come in. So, uh, so Jason, here's a couple things. Um, uh, Okay, so some vendors charge for recovery testing. Is there a charge to test backups? Uh, no, no charge. No, we'll we'll do an automatic self test in the in the background. That automatic self test is going to verify that you can you can recover at any point, locally, remote, or in the cloud. 
And then if you want to run your own test locally um, or remote or in the cloud, we're never going to charge you for any sort of testing. Okay, great. Thank you for that. Um, uh, uh, I want to make sure my data is safe. Can you go over the difference between local encryption and the cloud encryption? Uh, Jason, I think you covered this, but could you just go back over that again? It sounds like there's some concerns about uh, what's encrypted and how it works. Yeah, I mean, everything in Emotion is, in, is encrypted with AES-256, and then we're going to use a separate pass, pass key or uh, SSL encryption for everything at rest. So uh, should you have a scenario where you're holding a quorum local appliance and uh, you're, you're, you're protecting your systems with it and someone walks out with the appliance, if they don't have a passphrase, they're not going to get any data out of it, and that's how we're going to lock everything in at rest. Mm -hmm. Okay, perfect. Um, this one uh, is about the storage. Um, how long can I store my backups, and is there a limit? Yeah, you know, we, we break it down into two categories. You've got, you've got uh, basic retention, which is, you know, traditional backup retention starting at around 45 days. And then after that, if you need longer-term retention, just tell us, and we'll, we'll add on the ability to restore data for, for years if you want. Okay, great. Thanks for that. Um, Joe asks, how do I get my hands on this PowerPoint? Joe, uh, we will send a follow-up. Uh, so, uh, just be, um, uh, so just know that uh, once the webcast is over, uh, Quorum Marketing will we'll send you the slides so you can have them for reference. Um, uh, Jason Martin asks, uh, is there an automatic failover feature? Mm -hmm. Yeah, automatic failover, is, it's, um, it's something that we, we used to do and it's not, it, it, you can't automatically fail over. It takes a human. And the reason being is we, we're holding warm clones of your environment. And if you have a, a blip and network outage, if we had automatic failover, you would then have two VMs running with the same data set, the same IP. So uh, we're going we're gonna to not do automatic, automatic failover. But since we've made it so it's not automatic, we're going to make it as easy as possible. So you can do the failover from your phone, from a web browser, um, from essentially anywhere you can fail over, uh, uh, fail over the server. Okay, great. Um, Jason, you, you covered this, but maybe you could just go through it one more time. How does it work with VMware VMs? Um, could you yeah. kind of go through the process of a single VM failing and uh, you know what has to happen? Yeah, so VMware and Hyper-V and, and, and really any virtualized environment, um, the, the fact that we're separate stack, we don't care where the data comes from. So we're going to pull the, the VMDK off of the VM or off of the host, and we're going to build it into our own format. And so if you have a single VM outage on your VM infrastructure, you're going to go to our dashboard and say, hey, boot up this VM. Uh, we don't leverage your existing VMDK. We have rebuilt it on our solution. And our solution allows you to boot it from any point in time in your retention history. So if you're taking, you know, uh, four snapshots a day, for 45 days, you have that entire retention history to boot that VM from. Okay, awesome. Um, uh, Jason, I think this is an important point. Um, is a local device required to use OnQ Cloud? No, uh, it is not. OnQ Cloud, you can, you can um, replicate directly to our OnQ Cloud with no on-prem hardware. Uh, and yet, when you go to the management side, it's going to have an IP address from your subnet, and it's going to look as if it's sitting right next to your infrastructure. Okay. Awesome. Well, um, well, we're we're getting so the questions are flowing in, Jason. You still have some time. Can we keep going? I do. I do. Yeah. Let's, okay. Let's do perfect. All right. Failover testing. Um, can that be automated? Uh, and can you get a report of that failover testing? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, you can automate the testing of all of the clones, the VM clones that we create. Uh, you can do them on your schedule. You can either do them every time you you process a application application consistent backup, or you can do it on whatever hourly uh, timeline you want. At the end of it, we'll send you a daily digest showing you what happened, how we tested, and what the results were. Excellent. So that was yes, and uh, you get a lot of details there. So that's good. Uh, question, are we going to get any pricing? Um, happy to follow up on that one. We'll get you uh, the pricing. Um, absolutely. It sort of depends on the mix that you want, uh, you know, how much hardware, how much cloud, whether you have a remote configuration. So a little bit tricky to give pricing out on this webcast, but we're very happy to follow up on that one.
Um, there's a question about DNS, Jason. Um, mm -hmm. On the VM running from the cloud, does it reset the DNS? Can you talk a little bit about that? Because I think that's that's probably a little bit of the secret sauce here. Yeah, so that's that's actually the beauty in the solution is that if you're, I mean, if this question is, is pertaining to local uh, internal DNS, you don't have to reset anything because the VMs that we collect and you can fail over to will have the same DNS settings. It'll have the same host name, the same IP addresses. So if you've got a server labeled ABC, you know, dot local dot com, uh, you boot up the clone of that server in the cloud, it's going to have the same IP, so DNS does not have to change. Now, if you're talking about external DNS for web services or, e or email, uh, yeah, you're going to have to work in a, a, a DNS plan that will allow you to fail over to a separate external IP address that we're going to give you. Um, that is something that we can help guide you through the process of and help you make the right selection based on your environment. Uh, but if we're talking internal DNS, no changes are needed. That's really the, the beauty of this solution. Perfect. Okay. Well, Jason, um, it looks like, uh, oh, we had, uh, oh, okay. I was just about to call it, but I think we've had a couple more come in uh, right under the wire. So let's get to them. Um, is H Anywhere available with both OnQ uh, standard and ransomware? So, uh, so for the audience, if you're not aware, we do have a dedicated ransomware version of our product. Uh, so, Jason, do you want to just uh, kind of speak to that? Yeah, I mean, y y again, you really get to decide and choose um, where you deploy this solution. Uh, OnQ standard and OnQ ransomware. Um, if you need external protection, uh, you can definitely do that. If you go down the path and you need um, OnQ ransomware, you might end up saying, you know what, the OnQ cloud version is exactly what I need. So it really depends on how you want to build out the solution. Again, we're we're introducing HA Anywhere as a completely customizable um, on-prem and cloud-based recovery platform. Perfect. And I'll just add to that um, that the uh that the ransomware edition is built on the OnQ architecture. So, you know, it's very similar. It's just been tailored and customized for that particular use case. But um, as Jason said, we can work with you to customize and mix and match whatever makes the most sense for your particular environment. Um, uh, okay, Jason, looks like one more. Um, uh, <laughs> people are trying to trip me up here, guys. Uh, thank you for that. Uh, can you include SAN attached storage? Is OnQ replicating yeah. everything that a VM or VM uh, uses? Can you can you just take that one? Yeah, 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 uh, yeah. The, the short and sweet answer is yes. Uh, you can include SAN attached storage. Um, the OnQ will replicate everything that a VM sees. Perfect. Okay. Um, thanks, Joe, for the for the laugh. Uh, we did have some some other questions. We'll be happy to follow up with them. Uh, Jason, any final thoughts before we wrap up the webcast today? No, I mean I enjoyed it. This is a this is a great uh, this is a great point in I think uh, the evolution of high high availability. And um, I really hope that this gets some traction and, and I hope, hope you guys enjoyed this. Excellent. Well, great. Uh, Jason, on behalf of the audience and uh, from Quorum, thank you so much for your presentation day, today. We really appreciate the time you took and, the, uh, and uh, the time you took to answer questions as well. Uh, to the audience, thank you for your attendance. Uh, please be on the lookout for a follow-up email that will have details about how to get more information and also a recording of the webcast so that you can share with your colleagues. Thank you very much. Have a great day. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.